What is the status of Project War Mantle? On schedule, sir. Ever since the end of the Clone Wars and the initiation of Order 66, fans have been dying to know what happened to Commander Cody. When The Bad Batch was announced as the follow-up series to the Clone Wars, we knew that the series would likely be our chance to have our questions answered. Now that we are 8 episodes in and Rex has made an appearance, we have to wonder if Commander Cody will as well. In this video, we're going to explore that question and try to pinpoint how the fan favourite Commander could show up in the series. Also guys, stay tuned until the end of the video where I'm going to give you my personal thoughts theory. So without much further ado, and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. When Emperor Palpatine initiated Order 66 in Revenge of the Sith, Commander Cody was amongst the first clone troopers that turned against their Jedi compatriots. But he survived long after betraying Obi-Wan Kenobi. Properly named CC2224, Commander Cody first appeared on screen in Episode 3, portrayed by Tamara Morrison. The animated series The Clone Wars would then go on to cover some of his history in the war. During this time, Cody often served with Jedi General Obi-Wan Kenobi, building the respect that can be seen between the two in Revenge of the Sith. Together, they would lead the 212th Attack Battalion in several large-scale battles against the droid armies. Engaged in a mission to capture General Grievous on Utapau, Cody nevertheless immediately began moving his forces against Obi-Wan. Despite being good friends with the Jedi, Cody, like all clone soldiers, had an inhibitor chip, which was implanted in his brain during his youth. This made resistance to Order 66 impossible. His pursuit of Master Kenobi ended when he was wrongly convinced that Obi-Wan fell to his death. But of course, that was not the case. Now this is where things get foggy in the timeline. We don't actually know what happened to Cody after this. I believe there are two possible paths that Cody's fate could take. The first is that he remained loyal to the Empire, adopting the new mantle of Stormtrooper. In this capacity, he participated in many campaigns of the Imperial War Machine, including the so-called pacification of Kashyyyk, wherein the planet of the Wookiees was completely subjugated. In serving the Empire, Cody was one of the last waves of clones to see action, because of Project War Mantle, which takes place under the direction of Rampart. As we know from the Bad Batch, during this project, the clones will be completely terminated and replaced by recruits under conscription. We've already started to see this take place in the first couple of episodes of the series, and in this version of events, Cody is doomed, and we may not even see him in the series. The second option is that after Rex had his chip removed in the Clone Wars, he sought out Cody. The two were very close friends, and he probably removed his chip. The problem is, Cody already initiated Order 66, but much like Wrecker, maybe Rex was able to stun him or tranquilize him and then remove the chip. At the end of Episode 7 of The Bad Batch, Rex tells Hunter that there are many others out there, and this gives me hope that Rex has been in contact with Cody somehow. Alternatively, Rex has not been in contact with Cody yet due to the danger that it poses. It is possible that we might get an episode that involves Rex trying to find Cody to remove his chip. As a Cody fan, we can only hope that his fate is not as dark as we might assume based on what we know of what happened to other clones. I can't help but feel that Cody is way too important to Dave Filoni and to the Clone Wars story to not give his character a proper continuation and ending. But having said that, we just don't know. Now, as I said, if Cody stayed loyal to the Empire, we can expect a tragic fate. While some groups of clones, including Cody's 212th Legion, would be kept together, many of Cody's generation would be gradually dispersed amongst Imperial territory as the new human recruits filled the ranks. Even as their practical impact declined, the clones' influence could still be felt in both the iconography of the Stormtroopers and the mythologized legacy of the Grand Army of the Republic. As many of you know, Commander Cody was uncommonly skilled as a combatant and tactician, but ultimately he was still susceptible to the programming impressed on him since birth. Unlike fellow clone Rex who assisted the Rebels later on in the timeline, Commander Cody's legacy is very much complicated by the Empire that he was made to serve, especially in a campaign as oppressive as the pacification of Kashyyyk. But we still can't deny that he lived an impactful life on both extremes, so at the very least he should not be judged solely by the moment of coerced betrayal that we saw in episode 3. Now, I've mentioned the pacification of Kashyyyk a couple of times, but I haven't really gone into any depth. So I'm going to explain it a little bit so you can see what it was like for a trooper such as Cody. The pacification of Kashyyyk occurred on the Wookiee homeworld following the end of the Clone Wars, when the Galactic Empire conquered the planet following a siege. During its reign of the galaxy, 
the Galactic Empire conquered and brutally occupied the planet, the Wookiees were enslaved and used as labourers. The occupation was resisted by the Wookiees with repeated Wookiee uprisings. But unfortunately, these resulted in a vicious retaliation by the Empire, as you might expect. If we fast forward in the timeline, a large Imperial force remained on Kashyyyk after the Battle of Endor, led by Grand Moff Lozen Tolruk. Grand Moff Tolruk was a real monster, and he had the local population subjugated by the use of inhibitor chips and even hunted down Wookiees for sport. Thankfully, the Empire's occupation of Kashyyyk was ultimately ended. It was liberated in 5 ABY by the New Republic. In the early days of the pacification, the 212th were instrumental in the conflict on the planet, and as such, Cody may have been used as a brutal object of war under the command of the Empire. So going back to Cody, this is where things get a bit complicated. There have been a lot of reports, some of which are credible, about Tomwara Morrison reprising the role of Cody for the Kenobi series. This makes me wonder if Cody may have been saved by his chip, even though he did initiate Order 66, and if anyone saved Cody, it was Rex. This is how he might appear in The Bad Batch. Another point worth bringing up is that Dave Filoni had originally planned to make Cody a villain in Rebels. This is really interesting because elements of this plan could make themselves manifest in The Bad Batch. Filoni intended to bring Cody back into the fray in one episode of Rebels. It was the writer Henry Gilroy who revealed this in 2018. He mentioned that the storyline centred around Grand Admiral Thrawn figuring out that the crew of the Ghost was working with clones. Grand Admiral Thrawn would have brought in Cody to help research and track the clones down. Now, while it may have been an interesting, if devastating, concept to see Cody return as a villain, the storyline was eventually scrapped, as they felt it was far too dark and outside of the Star Wars Rebels narrative. So, all in all, with Cody's arc after Order 66 unfinished, a lot is up in the air and pending confirmation. To this end, let me give you my own theory. I believe there's no doubt Cody will appear in the Bad Batch. Rex is clearly out to find clones who haven't had their chips removed, and while his focus is on the clones who did not initiate Order 66, he will make an exception for his longtime friend and brother, Commander Cody. I definitely think Cody will live past the Bad Batch era and might make a cameo in Obi-Wan Kenobi. But what do you guys think and what did you make of all of the theories in this video? Do you think we're going to see Commander Cody in the Bad Batch? Tell me why or why not in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, and I will see you all in the next one. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.